Show my motto. Woo! Woo! Bad wolf. Bad wolf. Bad wolf. What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad wolf. Bad wolf. Mm -mm. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna use the Constitution. You know, supreme law of the land other than God. What's up, people? Uh, I did get some pictures of some people out there who bought the merchandise. Bad Wolf. You can find that on Black Side 32 and down below in the informational area. So thank you guys for supporting. Um, Because that's just awesome. Uh, this represents everything that we are doing. And it's a way of life, which is a mind state. So... Now, this is not going to be a terribly long video, but uh, what I did think was interesting, and credit for half of this information goes out to my young cousin, A6 Grind Time. You can find him on YouTube as well. What's going on, Fearless Floyd and all the rest of my lovely people out there? Um, In Black Law's Dictionary, so let's just make it all official, shall we? Mm -hmm. Welcome to the shabang bang this is the Black Laws Dictionary Deluxe Deluxe Number Eleven Edition, Eleventh Edition, okay, by Brian A. Gardner, uh, Thomas Reuters, okay. So we are on page fifteen eighty eight, and they have in here right to travel. Oh, you can't make this stuff up. Here to you. Okay, so let's see what they say. I mean, they're not our God, but this is stuff in their jurisdiction. The legal hemisphere, the maritime jurisdiction. Let's uh, see what they say. Right to travel. So apparently this was mentioned and put into place in 1838. A person's constitutional right guaranteed by the Privileges and Immunities Clause to travel freely between the states. Now, did you hear that? A person's constitutional right guaranteed by the Privileges and Immunities Clause to travel freely between the states. Now, your trolls out there Mm, the trash and kind of spoken. Mm. Would say, well, they were just talking about your ability to go from here to another state. Okay. Uh, if I wouldn't have read the clause myself, I would say, yeah, I, I mean, I could see that as being an argument. But the problem is, is why would you need to why, I mean if, if all the state why, why no, why would they need to create privileges in the immunities clause for you to pick up and go to another state if you're not owned you're not property so you can go to another one and yes you could even go as far as to argue and say that each state was it is the word state is synonymous with the word country so each state is its own country now we'll say maybe over in europe or somewhere where you cannot or they may not want you to go to another country that's there okay but in the united states of america why would you not be able to go to another state so having read this and then having read the privileges and immunities clause it talks about the, and this has already been ruled on in the uh, Supreme Court, where they say what they're talking about is for you to not only go anywhere you want to go, so it's partially true, but to utilize your private conveyance. You have the right. You have the right to have a horse or a buggy or even a vehicle, private though, private vehicle, not a state registered vehicle a private well you can do it too but then you're underneath their jurisdiction exercising benefits and privileges we're talking about rights and freedoms in the pursuit of happiness under the constitution and in this case the privileges and immunities clause so in their book right to travel why would you why would you call it right to travel 
why not say the ability to go to another state or something like that? They specifically said right to travel. And that's why on the passport card, and I believe it's in the book too. I don't have my book in front of me. But I know the card for sure. It says uh, the use of this is for land, air, and sea travel. Okay, so they're talking about public or private. You can use this for those things. But what? why would you need a passport card on land to travel? For land travel, air travel, and sea travel. Because you're operating privately. <laughs> so yeah, let's see if we got anything else in here right quick. Right to rescind. Right to remain silent from self-incrimination. Right to refuse treatment. They say also see right to die. Huh. Right to rebel. That one I haven't really heard. The right to try to overthrow. Ooh. It says the right to try to overthrow a government that violates the basic human rights of the governed. So they're saying that's a right. So if you have a right to do that, that means that they cannot then be your almighty controller or owner or you're not their slave. And if they try to force you to do something, that'll be peonage. Forcing you to do something without being compensated is peonage. The natural right to rebel, it was, of course, in the political field. Now, this is their book. Still reading from there. So they didn't say private. They said political. That means it's a jurisdiction. There's a thing here. So there's a political thing going on here. Politics, corporations, okay? That the full explosive force of natural law. Oh, here we go. We're talking about something else. So now there's natural law. They recognize that in Black Law's Dictionary. There's natural law. Well, what about civil law? What about public law? What about... So there's multiple laws. Which one are you operating under? But the first one was natural. So it is the predecessor and the ruling authority, though you within your little bubble in the political can do what you want to do as long as it doesn't violate a person's rights to leave and enjoy the natural. Okay. For the very notion that positive law, oh, there's another one, positive law, could only be justified by a social compact valid in natural law. So natural law came first, and underneath it came your positive law, which is political, which is public, and it said it's only valid under natural law. So those people out there, your little trolls, your little lawyers, your little turn it your little uh judges your 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 trolls it's because you guys only understand the political the legal and legal is different than lawful okay and so what they're saying is this is a social compact so when you're getting tickets and whatever else it's a social compact this is why i read things above and beyond what i i looking i was looking for because i've never read this so it must be valid in natural law, though not a necessary or even a general feature of natural law. Speculation. So it means it's not natural. It's under natural, created from, but it's not a piece that is itself natural. Could and did serve in the field of political action as a persuasive rationalization of the right of rebellion in the compact, if the compact were violated. That right to 19th century England seemed a picturesque survival of an earlier stage of political development. On the continent and in the Americas, it was to contribute to the violent French and American revolutions, which in their turn perhaps changed the whole course of Western civilization and were not without influence on the development of democracy in England itself. Julia Stone, Human Law and Human Justice, 78, 
1965. Right to privacy, right to pursue happiness, see right to pursue, right to present a defense, right to petition. Holy Christmas, there are all right of visit, right of search, right to right to exclude, right to oblivion. The theory that to protect one's privacy, an individual should be entitled to delete all information, public information about himself or herself stored on the internet. Also see right of forgotten. So the right of oblivion and done in 2009. Okay, now it does specifically mention stored on the internet. But I would I would argue to use that with some of these um, corporations that don't want to remove your information. Right to assemble, rights of minorities, right of survivorship, right of termination. Excuse me. Right of right night. Oh, now we're right of right of common, right of disclosure, right in pro, repropria, right in rem, So underneath the term right, there are two or three pages of things that belong as a subcategory, but equivalent to a right. Absolute right, accessory right, civil right, contract right, conversion right, implied right, indigenous rights, patent right, Inherent right, a legal right is that which is rec recognized by law. The breach of a legal right is usually um, redeemable, rem rem remedial, blah, 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 by monetary damage. A right historically recognized by common law courts. Everything was common law, and then they got these legal ones. Moral right, natural right, perfect right, which means recognized by law as fully enforceable. Public right, a right belonging to all citizens usually vested in and exercised by a public office or political entity. And then it also says C, private right. While we're here, let's see if uh, private right, as opposed to the right of the public or the state, then it says, see, public right. So there's different things going on here, guys. I've been trying to tell you. Right to counsel, right to bear arms is a constitutional law. Constitutional right of a person to own firearms. There you go. Hmm. Okay, <clears throat> that's it. So, right to trap, once again, is a constitutional thing as so supported by the federal district courts and the Supreme Court. They have it in their book, right to travel, look it up. Problem is, is that these enforcers don't want to hear about it. And the ones who do know about it, well, the ones who do know about it don't want to hear about it. And they just want you to move correctly. The ones who don't know about it are usually the low-level functionaries. 
and they don't know anything about it. They weren't taught it, so they want to ignore it. They want to find a way to make you contract. But when they violate your rights, what they don't know is now they can be sued in their public and private capacities because they don't know about constitutional law. The Bill of Rights. The Supreme Court rulings and readings. They've never heard of it. They've never dealt with it. Because they're not asking their superiors. Their superiors, if they're even halfway decent, will go, well, yeah, I can tell you about that, but privately. The other ones who are shite bags are going to say, oh, there's nothing to that. Don't worry about it. Just send it to the legal department. Let them sue you. Don't worry about it. That's what we have insurance for. Yeah, until you have so many claims against you for denying people of their rights that you're no longer employable. And then your boss goes, well, we can't really afford to have you here anymore. Maybe you can go to another district and work or something if they hire you with your higher rates. Because the insurance company ain't going to keep messing with you if your rates are going to go up because they're making claims on you. Most of you guys don't get to really see that because you don't have individual. You've got uh, blankets. The problem is, is that then that affects everybody else. And everybody's going to be like, well, our insurance rate's going up. <laughs> I don't know. It's because people are suing you. Some They're suing somebody in there. And then HR is going to come to you privately and say, uh, we don't know if we can really afford to keep you on. You, Your, your insurance said that they might drop you uh, if you keep having claims of being sued. Oh, and it does open you up as a police officer and a judge. Don't listen to them telling you that you have complete immunity. You have that with U.S. citizens, but as a private citizen, we can go after you in your public or private office. There's a difference. That's the part that they don't want to tell you. Ask some of the senior officers in your corps if they ever heard of right to travel and being sued in their private capacity. They'll tell you. All right, guys, I digress. Take care of yourselves. Everybody be out there, be safe, no matter who you are and what you do. Chat with you later.